Hey guys, this is Mark at Articon 2012 from the OG Spot, and here with me is Christine Marie Cabanos. Cabanos. Hi. Okay. Don't worry, nobody knows how to say it. <laughs> All right. So my first question is, how did you find your path into the industry, mm -hmm. and can you pinpoint how early your passion for the culture began? Well, I've been going to anime conventions since I was like in the sixth grade. So, yeah, I've been doing that for a long time. I've been to anime for forever. And I've also had vocal training a lot of my life. Mm -hmm. So when I got out of high school, I kind of just put two and two together, and I didn't want to do anything else. And I started out online, actually, and I did, like, little, you know, phone apps here and there mm -hmm. and whatnot. And then I went to workshops with Tony Oliver. Mm -hmm. He does adventures in voice acting. And he just suggested that I go ask the studio if I could be background characters. So they oh. called me in for that, and then it became incidentals, and then it became bigger characters so yeah oh okay um although you, you're relatively new um voice and aim in the anime and gaming world mm -hmm. um you've already scored like a number of leading roles a number of big roles and how does it feel to have the opportunity to you know tackle those big roles well it's like it's such a blessing that like it's gotten you know so far so fast like mm -hmm. i didn't expect to be where i am now at you know after all, it's only been like two years that I've been doing this professionally. So, yeah, it's like an extreme blessing, and I'm just like, so thankful. Cool. And um, do you ever uh, try a define? Do you ever, do you try or ever find yourself incorporating like a bit of your own personality into the characters that you play? Yeah, I always find a little bit of myself in my characters. Like, you know, Azusa, she's like, you know, she's like, you know, shy and timid, sort mm -hmm. of. And same thing with Madoka. Like, she, like, when. You know how she doesn't know what she wants to do with her mm -hmm. life? I felt the same way when I was growing up, and, like, I couldn't find out what I wanted to do because nothing else seemed worth it. So, yeah. I mean, I find a lot of myself in my characters. And that's, Sweet Girl, too. <laughs> that's, that's, a, that's a good thing. Cool thing, because I've heard, I re, I heard that from another voice, the Jason David Frank. He said the mm -hmm. same thing. So I was wondering if it's sort of kind of the same thing for, mm -hmm. for all of us. I think it's necessary to bring some of yourself in there. Mm -hmm. Um, uh oh. <laughs> Oops, we're gonna bleep, we're gonna edit that out. Um, conversely, have you picked up any traits from the, or habits from the characters that you played? I don't know about that. I mean, I kind of leave that in the booth, but I like to, you know, I like to just go in there and play and then leave it at that. No, no, adding like squid. Squid puns. I haven't done that. I say Nyan sometimes, I guess. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> um. Okay, Square Girl is undeniably funny, at least to me. Mm -hmm. um, due to Square Girl's constant, you know, highly imaginative personality and um, misinterpretations and delusions of grandeur, you know, regarding like the surface world and how she interacts mm -hmm. with um, the other other human characters. Mm -hmm. um, you now, was there a challenge to make sure that for the dub that those qualities? Because I know sometimes when that was happening, things get lost in translation. I think Tony did a really good job of translate. Like, he didn't translate it, but he wrote the script and made it adaptable for English audiences, and I think he did a really good job. Okay. Yeah. And, okay, what were some of your favorite moments yeah. or, in, in Squid Girl? Oh, in Squid Girl. Well, I like the parts where she vomits Squid Ink. Those are my favorites. Or the, the umbrella episode. Oh, the umbrella was, episode was, was my, really cute. That was one of my favorite. Once it got attached to it, yeah. and that was that was. She's fun. like, what does she call it? I have Fiala Yoko or something at the end. Like she, she was so amazed by it. Yeah, it's like the best. Um. Okay. Now for K on mm -hmm. for the second season, Azusa's character gets you know a lot more exposure than she did in the first season mm -hmm. since she sort of came at the end. Mm -hmm. Um. You know, she even gets a few episodes where. It mainly focuses on her and her, you know, activities with like with the Louis, other girls, yeah. yeah. And um, so was it like was it exciting to see like as the episodes went on to see how much she changed in part because I noticed like she started to take on personality traits from like the other girls. She started yeah, to, she gets a lot more aggressive with them and more mm -hmm. comfortable with asserting herself. That she's not as timid as she was in the first season, and I think that's really awesome. And she develops a relationship with each of the girls, like specifically, and I think that's really and cute. Like she even had like her own song, like yeah, initiative for her, for um, Yui's 
the, like grandmother that they yeah, teamed up. Yeah, when they teamed up together. Yeah. I love that episode. Um, okay. This this one is a bit, a bit of a difficult one because I know that, like, the second season, I think the first season, it was recorded, it recorded at, Bang, at Bandai, but, like, the second season was Sentai. Oh, so, yeah, it was taken up by Sentai. It was like they was that process any different or? I mean, we were still working with the same director, same engineers, so it was pretty much the same. It was okay. the only thing is that we didn't have our you know our Bandai people there with us, which yeah. is sad. But yeah. I missed them too. Yeah. I grew up with them. Um, and I also saw that you did like on YouTube, you did some song covers. Mm-hmm. Like, um, did you get inspired by? Was like K on to do them? Was that something that you did before K on? Oh, I've been doing like song covers for a long time for the past couple of years. And I think the most popular one is actually from Spice and Wolf. It's um, Tabi no Tochu. It's the opening. Yes. Yeah. I haven't. Yeah, I haven't either. Actually, <laughs> I read the part of the manga though, and I watched a couple episodes, but I really like the opening thing. But okay. yeah, I've been doing that for a while. Cool. And um, okay, on to Madoka Magic. Mm-hmm. Um. Okay, I know it's like it takes a bolder, darker direction, like especially compared to like other previous Magic Girl shows, like mm-hmm. called Cat the Soccer. That's my favorite one, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> or like um, Sailor Moon. So, it's, mm-hmm. do you think you know that's like when the show was like most appealing, like strengths for the show is the fact that you know it's it's different. Yeah, it's so much darker than what you would expect. Yeah, I mean that's what makes Madoka Magica stand out is the fact that. It took a genre that had been written off by a lot of people and, mm-hmm. like, with, you know, all the cliches and stuff and just turned it all around and made, like, did everything unexpected, and that's why it's so great. Okay. Okay. All right, a continuous, like, underlying thing I noticed, which really plays, like, off the old saying, like, be careful what you wish for, you yeah. know? Um, and it really, really ties in with... Sayaka, Homo, and your character, yes. Madoka. Um, do you think like fans could like really get like an impactful message from the show and like the things the characters experience? I mean, all of the girls did what they felt was right, and I think that's the most important thing. And you know, no matter what situation you get in, I mean, I know the the message that Madoka leaves everyone at the end is you know, as long as there is hope, mm-hmm. then you know, that's all you need. And I think, yeah, I think every girl did um, the right decision for themselves. And this is basically it towards the end. Um, mm-hmm. Skull Girls, I love that game. Like, I hate I'm, you. I'm trying. I'm trying to be good at it. I'm not good at it, so don't worry. As long as you try. Sarah's um, good at it. Really? Right, Sarah? What? Oh, I said Sarah's good at Skull, Skull Girls, Girl. right? Oh, yeah, you're not here. Oh, my. I think you Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, like, how did you um, get involved in that? In Skullgirls? Mm-hmm. Um, well, my friend, uh, the director of Skullgirls, Christina V., she mm-hmm. called up a bunch of people, and, you know, we all auditioned. I auditioned just like everyone else, mm-hmm. and then it came down to two more people, so I re-auditioned in the, and I just got it, and they called me in, and that was pretty much it. Cool. Yeah. And, um, like, as a gamer, like, speaking strictly as a gamer, do you gravitate towards the fighting genre, or is it, like, what genre of games do you... Well, I play a lot of JRPGs, and I love 2D fighters. Like, I play, I grew up playing, like, Marvel vs. Capcom 2, Street Fighter, and all that stuff. So I thought, like, it was, like, a revival of the 2D fighter Mm -hmm. genre, and I think it's, like, beautifully done. So you can potentially kick butt at, like, ultimate... Marvel. Maybe. <laughs> I'm not going to say anything like that because I can't keep any promises. But yeah. Okay. Alright. And um, I also noticed that um, you are a production assistant. Production I was assistant. before, yeah. Like on, on like it's like Mal, like Malincari, Malincari. Malincari Parhi? Yeah. yeah. And me. Durara, which is another one of my amazing um, show. Yeah, yeah, co-workers like favorite mm-hmm. things ever. Um, could you like elaborate on that and like tell us like the the process maybe in like switching between that and voice acting? Or well, it, production is something I just kind of fell into. Voiceover mm-hmm. was always my overlying goal, mm-hmm. but um, production like helped me see what goes on behind 
behind the mic. Mm -hmm. before, every, like, before anyone even gets into the studio, there's so much work that has to be done. Scheduling the actors, you know, making sure scripts are right, videos are good, you know, all the audio engineers and how they work. And you know, none of this can be done without all of the people that go on behind it. And it just make, gives me a greater appreciation for all of that, for the industry. Okay, and that's basically it. But the last thing I really want to ask is, well, no, it's last two but mm -hmm. for people who are getting into the industry or who may want to, or like, or new, whatever, what, what would you tell them? Like, what advice would you give them? To become a voice actor or just to become in the anime oh, well, industry? Anime industry, period. Well, I mean, if you're going to try doing production, you know, um, mm -hmm. you know, radio, TV, film, and production classes in college are always good, and then internships like get you in on the ground floor sometimes. Sometimes people get jobs from those. Mm -hmm. And um, if you're trying to be a voice actor, you know, typical thing, like acting classes, workshops, anime in particular, you have to move where the work is. So mm -hmm. LA, New York, or Texas. Mm -hmm. And yeah, you just kind of have to persevere because there's going to be a lot of rejection. So you just kind of have to keep pushing and hopefully you'll break it through. I didn't think Texas would... Texas has a lot of anime voice acting, actually. The anime, like, dubs coming out of there. Funimation is huge with that, because they distribute also. So, yeah. All right. All right, the last question is basically, I guess it's not a question. It's, um, could you tell us, maybe give us a clue on what to expect from you next? Like, I know sometimes they say, like, you can't say nothing. Yeah. Like, shh. Actually, something <laughs> today just got announced at the Aniplex panel. And I'm going to be playing um, Shiyami Moriyama in the Blue Exorcist dub. Yeah. So awesome. That was just announced today. So. Awesome. Yeah. All right. Well, that's it, guys. Bye, guys. <laughs> thank you so, well, thank you so, so much. much. No problem. It's my pleasure.